Hey folks, Nick here from another BookTube channel, and today I'll be talking about the novelization of the movie Alien, written by Alan Dean Foster. Uh, I read this as part of the novelization's theme week of Garb August, and I was really looking forward to it because I love the Alien franchise. Not only do I consider the first two movies to be amongst the best ever made in their respective genres, I also really love the comic adaptation by uh, Walt Simonson and Archie Goodwin. Um, I did a deep dive on this uh, on the channel, which um, I recommend because it was a lot of fun. Uh, I also really love the comics sequels published by Dark Horse Comics. So the fact that it took me so long to get around to this novelization was kind of weird. Uh, and I'm glad to have finally completed it. Um, just a note before we get into it. Uh, I will be talking about spoilers here. Alien is over 40 years old at this point. I'm going to assume you've probably seen the movie, um, so just keep that in mind going forward. The novelization follows the movie pretty closely in terms of plot. There are a couple additional scenes in here, which I think Foster must have pulled from the working script, which I'm sure he had access to. Uh, but for the most part, it's a pretty uh, close approximation. It is the distant future, and the Nostromo, a deep space big rig, is hauling a massive payload of mineral ore back to Earth for the company. On their way back to Earth, the crew is awakened months early from their cryo sleep because the ship's hyper intelligent computer mother has intercepted a distress signal. Per company policy, the crew is obligated to invest investigate the signal to determine the origin and offer assistance if possible. As you're probably aware, the crew end up bringing on board an alien life form that starts killing them off one by one. Because the story sticks so closely to the movie, I couldn't really find myself surprised by anything that happened in Alien, and I mostly just had a lot of fun trying to identify minor changes and inclusions that were cut from the film or the comic book. The most significant change from screen to page is the tone and genre, which are pretty noticeably different in my opinion. The first Alien flick is a horror movie, through and through. It happens to be set in space, but it follows the same beats as a traditional monster movie and is filmed as such. The sci-fi elements are secondary for the most part. The novelization, however, is pure sci-fi through and through, with the horror tone pretty much absent possibly by design from Alan Dean Foster. I think it's clear that Foster was intensely fascinated with the futuristic aspects of this story, as there is a ton of detail and attention paid to things like equipment and protocol. Technical conversations in the film are lean and to the point, whereas Foster fills his book with lots of fat, which may be considered unnecessary to many readers. We are given a lot more detailed insights into the ranking system of the crew, their contract with the company, their proper procedures, and stuff like that. For instance, when the crew is splitting up to try and capture the little chestburster alien, Brett rigs up these like shock poles that they could use to zap it. In the book, we get a scene where someone discusses the idea of needing a weapon to chase the chestburster, and then Brett makes them, he explains how he made them, he explains how to use them, he shows them what to do, and so on. In the movie, the scene just cuts to Brett already having made them, and he says something like, these are the shock poles, hold them here, don't put your hand on the zappy part. Done. Because of this commitment to the sci-fi, the horror does feel a bit left behind. It takes almost three quarters of the book for us to get our first big alien kill, not counting the chest burster. And the picking off of the rest of the crew is hastily performed with minimal description. I rewatched the Alien movie after finishing this to refresh my memory, and in that two hour movie, almost the entire second half is affected by the menace of the alien. Scenes are allowed to play out slowly to build suspense, and though the kills aren't graphic by today's standards, they are aggressive in their quick edits and harsh sound effects. The book doesn't dwell too much on these bits, and I did miss them. What this novelization does give you, though, is much more characterization than the film. I felt a stronger connection to the book characters than to the movie versions of themselves, and this is, of course, because in prose, 
we have the benefit of seeing into a person's mind. Secondary characters like Lambert or Parker are given a fresh new life here, so they feel like so much more than just fodder for the alien's kill count. There's even a single paragraph where we get the perspective of Jones the Cat, and I would have liked for the entire book to be from that POV. I've always interpreted Alien as being a movie criticizing capitalism, and I really dug this book strengthens that theme from the movie. If you boil it down, this is the story of a big nameless company, which I know in future installments is identified as Wayland Yutani, but in Alien, it's just the company, uh, is willing to sacrifice a crew of seven people and a cat so that they can be the first to obtain access to an organism that has the potential to make them an enormous profit. If Reddit existed in this universe, r slash anti-work would have a field day with this story. Some quick differences between the book and movie and comic book. Uh, in both the comic and the book, Ripley's suspicions about Ash are brought to a head by the fact that he has not tried to sleep with either her or Lambert. That is not present in the movie. In the comic, Lambert physically attacks Ripley outside the med bay after Kane is brought inside. That doesn't happen in the movie or the novel. Uh, and the novel is the only one to acknowledge the oddity of the fact that the interior of the alien spaceship seems to be much larger on the inside than on the outside. That's something that's always bothered me in the movie when Kane goes to investigate the eggs. Like, the shaft is enormous. The storage area is enormous and descends hundreds of feet to the point that I kind of always thought that they were investigating the cave beneath the ship, not the ship itself. Sorry to cut in here, but I did forget to mention this. One thing that I wish that the book had fixed um, was the reveal of Ash. Uh, because, again, spoilers, Ash is a robot. This is something that... I've always felt in the movie comes out of nowhere because at no point is it ever established that robots are a thing in this future. No crew member mentions like, oh yeah, no, I had to I had to work with a robot once, you know, and like or just any kind of throwaway line that establishes robots exist as a possibility in this world. I think that would have fixed it. That would have that would fix that reveal and the book doesn't do that. The book does emphasize how cold and calculating Ash is, but that's a big difference from being an actual robot. So I would have liked for that to be fixed, but it wasn't. I'll leave the rest for you to discover because I do recommend the Alien novelization, especially if you are a big fan of the franchise, or if you aren't a big fan of horror movies, but still would like to experience this monumental, culturally important story. My arbitrary and subjective grade for Alien by Alan Dean Foster is 7.5 out of 10. Do with that what you will. What is your favorite iteration of the Alien story? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for spending some time with me today, but now it's time to get back to reading.